Here's a cool question, which you frequently see on the test. You're presented with two cubes. One cube has side length equal one unit. And second cube is a larger cube, and it has side length equals three units. So the question is, how many small cubes can fit into the large cube? And you have four different choices. Choice A, nine. Choice B, 18. Choice C, 27. And choice D, 81. Do you know the answer? Give yourself a few moments to calculate it. Maybe 20 to 30 seconds. This is about as much time as you get in the real test. Ready or not? Let's go ahead and get to the correct solution together. To solve this challenge, you need to visually imagine how many small cubes can fit into one side of the larger cube. And the answer is that three small cubes can fit on each side of the large cube. And since cube is three-dimensional, the number of small cubes that can fit into the large cube can be calculated using the formula. Three multiplied by three multiplied by three, which is equal three cube. That's where the word cube might be coming from, which equals 27. Since cube is three-dimensional, the number of small cubes that can fit into the large cube can be calculated using the formula. 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3 equals 3 cube equals 27. So the correct choice here is choice C, 27. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's a cool question which tests your knowledge of percentages. You're presented with the chart which shows average cryptocurrency price. And question tells you that the chart shows the average price of cryptocurrency for each month from January to May. And the question is, what is the highest approximate percentage price increase between two consecutive months? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 60%. Choice B, 70%. Choice C, 80%. And then choice D, 90%. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20 to 30 seconds, depending how well you are with calculations. Did you figure it out? Let's go ahead and get to the correct solution together. This challenge, we need to analyze the chart first. And there are only two consecutive months with the price increases. Price goes up from January to February, and then from February to March. And price goes down from March to April, and price goes down from April to May as well. So let's look at two months with price increases closely. Between January and February, price went up from $10 to $15. So the difference is 15 minus 10 equals 5. Between February and March, price went up from $15 to $27. So the price increase is calculated by subtracting 15 from 27 and the result is 12. Let's calculate the percentage increase. Between January and February, price increased by 50%. This is calculated by dividing 5 by 10 and multiplying by 100%. The end result of this is 50%. Between February and March, price increased by 80%. And this is calculated by dividing 12 to 15 and multiplying by 100%. The end result of this calculation is 80%. So the correct choice here is choice C, 80%. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is one of my favorite questions because it's easy to understand but might be challenging to solve. You need to calculate question mark and you're presented with the expression. You need to calculate question mark. And on the other side of the expression, you have 16 divided by 4 and multiplied on the value in parentheses, 3 minus 1. You have four different choices to choose from. Choice A, 8. Choice B, 2. Choice C, 4. And choice D, 1. Do you think you can calculate the answer? Think again. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20 to 30 seconds. 
you can pause this video to see if you can come up with the correct solution. Ready or not? Let's go ahead and continue so we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. As we all learned in school, the correct order of operations in math is parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division, and then addition and subtraction. You can even use the acronym PEMDAS, which reflects first letter from all of these operations. Based on this information, the first step in the calculation would be subtracting 1 from 3, because these are the values in parentheses. And the result of this calculation is 2. The question is, what are we going to do next? We have a choices of dividing 16 by 4 or multiplying 4 by 2. And the correct answer here is that we need to divide 16 by 4 as a second step. What PEMDAS doesn't mention is that multiplication and division have equal priority and calculated from left to right. And this is exactly the case for our expression. 16 divided by 4 is on the left side of the expression and 4 multiplied by 2 is on the right side. So the first thing we need to do is divide 16 by 4. The result of this calculation is 4. And in the last step, we need to multiply 4 by 2. And the result is 8. So the correct choice here is choice A, 8. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. A lot of times you might be presented with the pie chart questions on the test. This is an example of this type of question. You need to calculate petroleum consumption. The ratio between natural gas, petroleum, coal, nuclear power and renewables consumption is 8 to 6 to 4 to 3 to 3. The total consumption of energy is 3 billion dollars. So how much in US dollars was consumed in form of petroleum? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 510 million. Choice B, 610 million. Choice C, 750 million. And choice D, 600 million dollars. Do you see the answer? Do you know how to calculate these types of problems? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20 to 30 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am going to go ahead and reveal the solution and the way to solve these types of problems on the test. The best way to solve these types of challenges is to understand the relationship between the consumption ratio and total value of energy consumed in US dollars. If we add up of all the units in the ratio, we will get to the sum of 24, because 8 plus 6 plus 4 plus 3 and plus 3 equals 24. Our total consumption expense is $3 billion, but answers are presented in million dollars, so we need to convert $3 billion into million dollars, which would be an equivalent of $3,000 million. Petroleum represents 6 units out of 24, so the total consumption of petroleum can be calculated as 6 divided by 24 multiplied by 3000 and we will get our answer as 0 0.25 multiplied by 3000 which will equal 750 million dollars. So the correct choice here is choice C, 750 million dollars. Did you come up with the same answer? If you know the better way to solve this challenge, please make sure to post it in the comment section of this video. Here is one of the frequently used questions to test your understanding of the percentages. Candidate is taking a test, so imagine yourself, with 60 multiple choice questions and answered 60% of the first 20 questions correctly so far. So what percent of the remaining questions does candidate need to answer correctly to get 70% rate on the test. You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 60%, choice B, 65%, choice C, 70%, and choice D, 75%. Do you see the answer? Take a close look and possibly get yourself a piece of paper or use Microsoft Excel to do the calculations. Or maybe you can do all the calculations in your head 
That would be amazing. Give yourself 15 to 20 seconds. This particular question might require a lot of steps. So give yourself some time and try to solve it. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and reveal the correct answer as well as the solution. As I already mentioned, this is a multi-tiered question and it requires you to do multiple calculations to get to the correct answer. So the first calculation we would need to do is how many questions have already been answered correctly by the candidate. And the answer is calculated by multiplying 20 questions by 60%. So the answer is 12 questions have already been answered correctly so far by the candidate. In the next phase, we need to determine how many remaining questions need to be answered correctly to pass the test at 70% rate. So if there are 60 questions total on the test and we need to pass it at 70% rate, we will get to 42 questions that need to be answered correctly to get a passing rate of 70%. In the next phase, we need to calculate how many remaining questions remain in the test. To do this, we need to subtract 20 from 60 and it tells us that 40 questions are still remaining. Now, how many questions need to be answered correctly out of remaining questions to still get to 70% passing rate. To calculate this, we need to subtract 12, which is the number of questions we already answered correctly out of first 20 questions answered from 42. And 42 minus 12 equals 30, which means that out of remaining 40 questions, 30 questions need to be answered correctly to get to the 70% passing rate. So the last calculation we need to do is to calculate what is the percentage of remaining questions we need to answer correctly. To do this, we need to divide 30 by 40 and multiply it by 100%, which is an equivalent of 0.75 multiplied by 100%. And the correct answer is choice D, 75%. Do you know the better way to solve this challenge? Please share your thoughts in the comments section of this video. And I hope that you nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. A lot of times you might get a question which asks you to determine the sales increase. You're typically presented with the graph which shows lines that represent different sales. In our case, we are represented with the chart that shows sales of cardio equipment from January to June, sales of bikes represented by the blue line, sales of elliptical represented by the orange line, and sales of treadmills are represented by the gray line. The question asks you to determine largest sales increase. Specifically, you need to determine which period represents the largest one month's number of item sales increase for cardio equipment sales. You have four different choices. Choice A, bikes from January to February. Choice B, bikes from February to March. Choice C, ellipticals, March to April. And choice D, treadmill, May to June. Do you see the answer? You may need to look closely to determine the correct answer for this question. Give yourself five to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the right solution. Are you ready? We're going to move forward and cover the answer for this problem and get to the solution together. To answer this question, we need to look at the graph closely. For each data point on the graph, we need to determine the actual value. And once we have all the numbers, we need to answer the question by looking at the differences for equipment sales from months to months. Specifically, in this case, you need to evaluate four different choices that are represented by answers A through D. Let's do it together. Based on the chart, bike sales increased by 2 from January to February, and the increase was from 5 to 7 items sold. Bike sales also increased by 2 from 7 to 9 between February and March. Elliptical sales, on the other hand, increased by 7 from March to April, jumping from 2 to 9. And treadmill sales increased by 4 between May and June, going up from 2 to 6. So the correct answer here is choice C, elliptical sales from March to April, because jump was by seven from two to nine. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. A lot of times you get tested on your ability 
to analyze charts and graphs. In this question, we see a pie chart, which is broken down into two parts. You see parts presented in the different colors – white, red, blue, gray and black. And the question asks you how many cars. Let's read the question more carefully. The pie chart shows the colors of the cars past traffic light in one hour period. A total of 250 cars pass the traffic light. The number of white cars is represented by an angle of 90 degrees. Approximately how many white cars pass the traffic light? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 57. Choice B, 60. Choice C, 63. And Choice D, 67. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Do you see the answer? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution and solve this challenge together. A lot of times, answer given to you as part of the question. And this is one of those cases. Pie chart is represented by a 360 degree circle. We know that 90 degree angle represents number of white cars past the traffic light. And 90 degrees is a quarter of 360. To do the calculations, you need to divide 90 by 360, which is a quarter or 0 0.25. We need to build the proportion to calculate the final value. If total number of cars past the traffic light is 250 and it's represented by a 360 degree circle, to calculate the number of white cars passed, we need to multiply 250 by 0 0.25. So the end result is 62.5. The closest value among the answers is 63. So the correct choice here is choice C, 63. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thank you for your endorsement, support and patronage. Please also check out additional resources in the description section of this video. I also encourage you to check resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net. Please leave your feedback, corrections or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.